Hey folks, and welcome to another deep dive. So this time around, we're going to be looking into a system called Timeline. Uh, so Timeline is something I'm a huge fan of. Uh, it allows you to really easily to, to set up some fairly complicated uh, cutscenes and things like of that. Uh, so we're going to take a look at how we can make use of that, the kinds of things that we can do with it. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty damn cool and very little coding often needed with it as well, which I, and I say this as a programmer, I love opportunities like this where I don't need to do any coding for it, I can just make it all visually and it just works. Uh, so let's dive right on in. Uh, so Timeline will typically be there by default, but just to check, I wanna to go to Package Manager. Uh, as always with the packages there, I need to be selecting Unity Registry. And then I want to check and say so timeline, we've got the tick there, so it's installed. I am also going to bring in Cinemachine. Uh, so if you haven't already seen the deep dive video on Cinemachine, I do recommend checking that out. Uh, Cinemachine gives you a lot of cool stuff with cameras and being able to control and work with those. Uh, the reason I'm bringing that in is because Cinemachine integrates really well with Timeline. So you can set up some really nice stuff there with it. Um, so it's very, very cool. Highly recommend. Uh, excellent. So as always, I'm going to set up a little bit of a scene here. I'm going to be having a few materials. So let's begin. Uh, with I am going to set up a plane and I'm going to make that a bit longer. Uh, this is going to be my ground. Uh, so I'm going to make that kind of like a not not a fully a road color, but kind of kind of close to that. That looks pretty good. Uh, this, this is going to be, I'm not going to call this road. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Got that. Man, it's not that exciting, but uh, let's get set up as well. A couple of cubes. These are going to be my doors. So this is going to be the left door. So let's make that a bit of a more appropriate height. Uh, let's shrink the width of that, no, the other one. Uh, let's shrink that. That looks pretty good. Might need to make that more like five. Eh, let's go for maybe four. That looks, no, nope, five would actually work. Cool. So we'll go for five and position that at minus 2.5. So that's the left door. And then we've got our right door, and that is going to be positioned at 2.5. And I feel like those need to be higher. I don't feel like those are. Let's make these really, really sort of grand, tall doors. That, yeah, yeah, that'll do. Ah, uh, no, actually, I want those larger. Let's go for four meters high. Cool. So it's pretty good. Uh, I've got my camera here. I'm going to relocate my camera uh, so that it is more looking over at the doors here. So it's going to be at a Z of zero and an X of 10. And then, oops, let's not change the Y. But let's rotate around to minus 90. And let's raise the height a little bit so we're about a standard character height of around 1.8 meters. So what I want to be able to do is I want to have this camera move along through here when we get to a particular point. I want to have those doors open and then I want to have them close behind me. That's all I want to have happen initially. So this could be an initial cutscene. We're walking along a corridor, for example. Uh, I'm going to give my doors a material. So let's make sure each door has got that. And what color do we want the doors to be? Let's make these kind of a darkish, darkish wood looking color. There we go. So this is where timeline, I can, with timeline, I can make these open. 
I can make the uh, camera move forward. I can do all of that just in timeline. So let's see how we go about setting this up. So timelines are an asset. So you can reuse a timeline in multiple different scenes, which is really cool. Uh, so timelines. Uh, or we could call it cutscenes would be another thing we could use there, but we can use these for more than that. So these are an asset that I create. We can see we've got timeline down here. Uh, so this is going to be intro cutscene one. So I'm going to have multiple versions of this. So I then drag that into the scene. And I like to organize this stuff neatly, so I usually group the timelines. Uh, into a uh, parent object. You don't have to, but I like to do that just as an easy way of being able to group them. And then I need to edit this timeline. So what I can go is I can go up to window and sequencing and timeline. Uh, now I usually like to bring it down here so I can have the scene view up at the same time, just so it makes it a little bit easier to know what's happening. i shrink that a little bit so I've got a bit more of a view. So as long as I've got the timeline selected, I can start then manipulating stuff. So a couple of things of how we orient with this. So we've got um, these markers up the top here and we can change whether those are frames or whether they are a time code, seconds. We've got different ways of working with it. I generally work in seconds because that's just something that makes a bit more sense for me for planning things out because I'm usually when I'm thinking about things I have a sense of okay how long in time is something going to take and so we've got you know, a range here of let's say we want this to happen over maybe let's maybe say 10 seconds uh, so we're gonna have it be fairly slow so let's start with organizing this so I'm gonna do the camera first so I can drag my camera down here. So I just drag it from the hierarchy into the section on the left here. And it gives me options here. So we'll be looking at most of these different ones. So activation, we can use to turn something on uh, and we can leave it on at the end of that or we can turn it off at when we're done. So it can be useful for just sort of bringing in a particular thing. Animation is the one that we're going to use. It allows us just to embed an animation for something and then you know, play that where we need to. We can also just play audio using the built-in Unity audio system and signal tracks are something else we'll have a look at. That's a way of having your timelines talk to code uh, and, and activate particular events. So for this case, I want an animation track. So you'll notice here I've got this record button. Uh, if I already had clips, I could drag in animation clips here, but I can also just record it directly in the timeline. And this is one of the really powerful things with this. So I can do start recording and then I can select my main camera. And what you'll notice, and this is how I usually start with these, is I will pick the setting that I'm wanting to modify and I initially change it and then just return it back to what I want as the starting one. And you'll notice these go red. That indicates that these are being, currently those are being controlled by the animation and that it's picking up those changes for them. So I might wanna start here and then let's say at four seconds, I want to move the camera forward so I can just be adjusting X and I might have it that the, the camera gets right up close and I can check exactly where it is. So maybe the camera gets pretty close. Maybe it gets to within one meter. And then we're gonna say that, okay, you know, I, I'm sure something that many folks have encountered, you go up to automatic doors and they don't open and you're standing there and you've actually stood too close. So you then have to go and stand back a bit so that they then actually open for you. Uh, so we're gonna simulate that. So at four seconds, we've gone up, we're standing super close to the doors. Then a couple of seconds later, we'll say maybe six seconds at six seconds. So two seconds later, we've taken a step back. So we can bring this back. We've stepped back to maybe two meters. Then we'll assume the doors are opening at that point. 
And then we will say that at 10 seconds, we are now uh, fully through the doors and maybe we are chilling at minus five. And maybe we have decided to turn around a little bit as well. Maybe not fully, but maybe we've turned just a bit like that. That's gonna, I'm gonna just round that off. So as soon as I'm done, I can hit stop. I can go to the beginning of it and then, okay, well, let's see how this looks. So I play. So one of the things we'll notice there is it's retained that rotation that I already had. So that is because I didn't set any uh, rotations there. So let's return this uh, back to being what we started at. And so we've actually got that rotation in there. So what we can do to fix that is if we click on the curves view here, we can see the rotation is in here and we can see that the rotation uh, is, so it's the rotation here on the Y, it's just got the one value. We didn't end up actually recording any other ones. So what we could do is we could actually double click on the curve here, edit key, so much like in the uh, animation curves, we could just manually edit these. So I'm gonna chuck that to 270. And we can see it's reset the start one there to that. So now when I go to play this, so select the cutscene and start playing it. And if we go to the game view, we can kind of see what we're looking at. So I put the wrong rotation in. Uh, we actually want to be rotated so, I, and again, I can easily adjust this. So, was it 180 I wanted? Nope. Uh, it was 90, I believe. Or was it minus 90? Was it just zero? It was just zero. For some reason I thought it was minus 90. Uh, as I've said in the other videos, there are gonna be cases where I get things wrong. Uh, and sometimes deliberately, sometimes just accidentally. So we can just test this out and we can hit play and get right up close to it. We've taken the step back. Now that rotation doesn't look so great. So again, we can adjust what these curves are doing. Uh, and one of the things that you might be able to uh, do here is, okay, well with this, Rather than that being 315, because uh, we're starting at zero. So let's make it that we are rotating to minus 45. And then we can see how does that look. And that's a bit smoother. That's a bit of a better appearance there with that. It's a little hard to tell that we're taking a step back uh, from, the, from the actual doors. So we could just you know, put a little bit of an offset on the doors. So just the tiniest, tiniest amount, just so there's a little bit of a gap. Uh, that'll just make it that we can tell that these are actually, we're moving away from them. So now we move in closer, like uh, too close, take a step back, walk through and we've got the rotation happening there. So that's pretty cool. Still no code for any of this, which is great. So, okay, we're animating that. Well, we can do a similar thing for the doors. We can bring in our door left, add in an animation track. Now we know that at this point, at six seconds, they've taken a step back. So what we could probably, a good thing to do at that point would be, okay, we'll start animating the left door there. We've taken a bit of a step back, so we move them out of the way. Uh, so again, we've started recording, which means we can click on over here and we can start adjusting these. Uh, again, I always just change the value a little bit at first and then 
So over the course of a second, and you can see as we can drag through, we can see where the timeline, the rest of the stuff is at. So the other animations are happening at the same point in time. So we can, that makes it a lot easier for us being able to key off these ones. Because we know, okay, well at this point, we probably want these doors to be most of the way open. So we could go for minus 3.5. And then now we know the character is going to be fairly clear of it. And we can, again, we can be watching in the scene view and okay, now they're clear of it pretty much. So at this point, we could again, make it so that we've got another key. The easiest way for doing that is you just tweak the values a little bit. And then maybe these doors slam shut. Might go really quickly to being shut behind us. And then that one's done. And we can again test it. We can come to the game view and we get to the start and play, get closer, take a step back. As we're stepping back, the door starts to open. We go through and the door will have already slammed shut. So that's pretty cool. And we can do a similar thing with the right side door. We set up our animations. We already know where we've got particular things happening. So we already know that at this point, if we start recording, uh, we can grab our right side door and tweak those values a little bit. So again, doing the same thing, just to manually you know, chuck in a key. It's often the quickest way to, to chuck one in. Uh, then we know at seven, we want that to be uh, around 3.5. I think we went for the left door and we can compare. Yep, that looks like about the same amount. And then we know that, yep, at this point, we again want to just sort of manually add in another key. And then again, we want to have fully shot at this point. So we can just skip back to the start, go to the game view, test. So we're walking up, ah, it's too close. Take a step back, doors open, we go through and the doors have all closed. So all of that, if I just hit play, then that will happen just runs and while it's playing, we can see where these things get to. Uh, it moves back, we go through and done. So timelines will automatically play. We can turn that off if we want. So by default, they're set to play on awake. Uh, wrap mode. So if I set this to loop, then what happens, we're about to see. We go through, Step back, doors open, doors have closed, and then oh, we're back again. So we can have these loop if we want. Uh, we can also set to hold. So if you're making permanent changes to stuff, that can be really good. Uh, but let's see what happens when we do that. So here we go, it's held. Uh, we'll hit 10 seconds and we are done. So then at that point, game's running. Uh, I can't move my camera because the timeline is still running. It is still playing. So when we use hold, it's still active. So if I use none, then let's see what happens when we get to the end. But that's an important thing. So that is an issue you can run into with timeline where you've set up particular stuff you might have moved a character to a location. If you don't actually, if you leave it on hold, then the character can be stuck. Uh, whereas with none, we can move around. Typically I'll often use uh, hold, but I will then actually have the character, I'll explicitly tell the timeline to stop. Uh, so that's a pretty cool setup. We can move easily set up all of this. It's just moving between the things, uh, working pretty nicely. So I'm going to, do a little bit more with this. What if we wanted a security camera? And what if we wanted to, 
you know, have some something where, okay, as we're as we're watching this unfold, we're switching camera view. So that is where uh, good old Cinema Machine comes in. So this is where with Cinema Machine, I am going to set up a virtual camera. Uh, so this is going to be the security camera. And I am also going to set up a, another camera that is going to be the player camera. So with those cameras there, now that I've got Cinema Machine in, if I actually play this, then it doesn't really work so well. Uh, because obviously as soon as Cinema Machine's in, it takes things over. Um, those are overriding the main camera. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to remove these so we don't actually have them anymore. Uh, so we're back to where we were. And I'm going to set up a copy of this scene. So this is going to be timeline only. Uh, and yes, you can reload, and then I'm going to duplicate that to a one that will be timeline plus cinema machine, and then switch to that one. So I'm going to add back in our cinema machine virtual cameras, so the player camera and the security camera. Now, the timeline that I've got here is not really going to work entirely. I need to set up a different version of that. Uh, so what I can do with it is I'm going to delete that and I'm just going to duplicate this. So I'm duplicating the asset uh, and I'll be able to see intro cutscene two. I'm going to just drag that into the scene and into my timelines. Uh, and we'll see how that actually works for what we need to do there for having this move around. Uh, so player camera needs to start back where it was before. So over at, uh, it would have been minus 10. Minus 10 and 1.8. And that looks pretty decent. Uh, and we need to be looking there. So that's good. We've got that camera looking forward. Uh, I'm actually going to turn off things like the body and aim sections. Because uh, we don't need those to be doing anything extra. We just need those uh, there Just that because they're purely uh, being controlled externally. We don't want Cinema Machine doing anything fancy with them uh, So we've got the player camera. We've got our security camera now our security camera again body we don't need to do anything with uh, but we can relocate this to uh, let's position this so that this security camera is just over here. So it's up here and let's maybe put it up at the top of the walls and let's bring it a little bit over here. So it's at minus 0.5. So that's actually going to be security camera one. And we're going to have security camera two. Both of these, we want them to be following, or sorry, we want them to be looking at the player camera. So security camera one and two are going to be looking at the player camera. And we go, because what we want to do is we want to animate, we have the player walks up while they're walking up. We want to be having camera one looking at them. And then as they go through, we want to have camera two look at them. And then we're going to transition over to the actual player camera. So our cutscene, let's take a look at it. Now it doesn't have the animators linked up because the timeline assets here 
These are an asset. So an asset can't link to something in the scene. An asset can only link to another asset. So when we drag one of these timelines in, even though they're reusable, we need to actually relink them up to things. And that's okay, that's easy enough to do. We select our one in the scene, and we know this is door left. We know this is door right. And we know this is our player camera. So if it doesn't already have an animator on it, we'll need to create it, and that's okay. We let it do that. So now it's linked up to it. And we'll be able to see the player camera comes through, steps back, doors open, player continues to move through. And what we then want to do is we've got our two security cameras, and so those will actually switch between which one is being shown. So here's how we do that side of the animation. We take our main camera and we drag it in. And you'll notice these are context sensitive. So the type you drag in can actually change the type of thing that it will give you options of what to work with. So I can add in a Cinemachine track and then this now lets me blend between cameras. So what I can do is I can say, well, I want camera one. And we know, we find the point where the other camera crosses, which is about, about sort of there, about like seven-ish odd seconds, maybe, maybe like 7.5. So what we can do is we drag this up like that, then we bring security camera two down. And then security camera two, we can control, you see how there's a, an overlap here? That's the blending area. That is it blending between those two cameras. And we don't necessarily need to do a blend. In this case, we probably just want to do a hard cut. So if I go to the game view, we can see we're in security camera two, and then this one we're in security camera one. And it's following it, which is good, and then it blends. Now, to make it a little bit easier to tell where the player is, let's actually, to the player camera, I'm going to just add a sphere, just so we can tell uh, where that player is at any point in time. Because then if we select our timeline, then we can see, okay, well, here we're following this, it takes a step back, then watch it emerge through. So that's pretty cool. And then what we could do at the very end is we could switch over to the player camera. And that one, we might want to have a bit of a blend. So we might say we've got a bit of a blend there over to the player camera. And then if we put together the whole timeline, we're watching character move in. So we get too close, they step back, they go through. Then we blend over to being from their perspective. And we could change this so it is a, uh, hold at the end. We could also do stuff where we're turning off particular ones. Uh, so for example, this is where we could make use of an activation track, uh, where if we dragged these cameras in, we could have an activation track and we could say, well, these cameras are only active up until this point. Maybe we give it a little bit of leeway just in case uh, there's any issues there. And we could do the same with security camera two. So we're just saying these are only active in this time range. And then we can actually control uh, what happens with these. So post payback state, leave as is, or we can make it go inactive. Because then what will happen is our timeline is not set to wrap. Uh, which then, if we play, we'll see we're running, so characters walking through, 
doors opening, steps through, we blend cameras, and then we turn these off. So we just locked on the player camera at that point. Uh, we could also, just so we've got you know, cleanness of uh, behavior, we could make it that we the uh, first security camera that we're showing has a higher priority so that it's you know always defaulting to that initially. And that's looking pretty good. Like we've got this nice sort of movement happening through there. Uh, we're able to be controlling what's happening. Um, and we can do more than this though. Like this is you know, a pretty cool setup. But there's actually a lot more that we can do with this. Because we mentioned that the, this idea of signals and that we can have them talk to code. Uh, and we can. So what we could be doing is a whole bunch of different things, honestly. Uh, let's set up a, another timeline for, we're going to say that this timeline makes uh, a bridge up here. So we're going to use this to make a bridge up here. Uh, Going to group that nicely into the timelines folder. So we know at the end of it running, uh, or the end of cutscene two running, that we're going to be over here. So, and we're going to be looking over this way because we can check and see. And yep, yeah, that's where we're going to be looking. Cool. So let's set up our bridge that's going to appear. So a bridge is just going to be a cube uh, that let's stretch the cube. Uh, let's go for longer than that. And let's make it four wide. And let's reposition this so that it is there is a good spot. Uh, and just to make it look a little bit prettier, let's give it a material. And so it's going to be our bridge, and we're going to make that kind of a kind of a sandstony color. That looks pretty good. So again, making sure I'm naming things nicely. Uh, so I want this bridge to initially be way out of the way. I want this to be down here at minus ten. I'm just going to set up a little timeline that all it's going to do is that timeline is going to bring that bridge up. Uh, so at that particular point, we're going to do a recording. So again, oops, we'll not animate the actual timeline. Uh, I want to animate the bridge. So again, I can make it that it is there. So I want to make this to appear fairly quickly, but what I want it to do is I want it to actually initially be too high because we know that it needs to be about point, minus 0.5. I want it to initially go up to like a two and then I could maybe say, well, maybe it bounces down fairly quickly afterwards to maybe it goes to minus 0.5. No, that's actually exactly where we want it to be. Let's make it minus one. Maybe then it bounces up to 0.5. And then it eventually, after a few seconds, it settles down to minus 0 0.5. So the bridge will come up. There we go. It bounces a little bit. And then it's dropped back down because I need to set that timeline to hold. But I'm also going to turn off play on awake because I don't want that bridge to appear immediately. I want to have one timeline tell the other timeline when to appear. So I could set up here a signal. So signal show bridge. And then what I do is my cutscene two. I want to actually drag in my bridge appear one, and I want to add in a signal track. Then I can say add signal emitter from asset. I could, if I if I wanted to just create the signal in here, I could also do that. 
Uh, so I'm going to switch the game view so I know, okay, the character is looking this way. That feels like a nice dramatic point to have this appear. So I've got the signal set up. Now you see here, it's telling me there's no reaction. So a timeline sends a signal and then the thing receiving the signal needs to react to it. So I can set up a reaction and then what I can say is playable director play. So what should happen then is we're switching between the cameras as we move through, we get to here where we're looking out and we see the bridge appear. So let's put this all together and let's test it. So we are playing, we're watching the character move through, we watch them step back. As they go through, we switch cameras and we blend over towards them and we see the bridge appear. So that looks pretty good. That's working pretty nicely. Now this intro cutscene one, probably want to set that to hold. So it doesn't, uh, the view doesn't bounce around anything like of that. Uh, the thing though there is then the character wouldn't be able to move. But what we could do is we could actually have this bridge one once it's done, because maybe until it's done, we don't want the player to be able to move. So I can drag in my other cutscene, another signal track, and I can add a signal emitter. In this case, I've just created one from scratch. So I can say create signal, I can pick where it's going. Uh, so this is going to be signal intro cutscene end. And so this, I'm going to put it right about this point, I think is fine. Allow the player to be a little bit adventurous and they could potentially try and race across the bridge in that half a second. Uh, and again, reaction wise, playable director and stop. So let's put it all together and see, see what we've got happening. So we watch the player move in, they step back a little bit, go through, switch over to watching from their viewpoint and we watch the bridge appear and done. So let's look at what we've assembled here because there's a lot of different things happening and we've written no code to do any of this. So it's completely without any code. So our first timeline. First timeline is moving the player. So it's moving the player's camera. We're animating the two doors. We're blending between our cameras. So between security camera one and two, we're just doing a hard cut. So it's just a hard cut between those two. And then we switch over to the player character and that's actually a blended transition. There's an overlap here that we can see that's happening. We're also controlling and making our two security cameras are active during this section. And then if we look on the actual time, if we click on the timeline, so not the particular clip within it, but the timeline, we're saying that at the end of it, turn those cameras off because we don't need them anymore. Uh, so we can turn stuff off and on just for the duration of it. Then we're sending a signal. And in this case, we're sending the signal to another timeline to tell it to start playing. So at 10 seconds, it starts running this bridge one. Bridge one animates the bridge appearing. It does a little bit of bouncing up and down just so that it, it looks like it's uh, bouncing into position. And then it also sends this signal to talk to this other timeline. So it does that to tell the other timeline to stop because this first cutscene is set to hold. So the state of things that it has brought them in, it's not just left them in that state, it is actively holding them in that state. So if a timeline's wrap mode is set to hold, then at the end of it, unless you stop it, it holds things in that state. So if you try and change them, it will not let you. Um, so we can either use none there, or if we want uh, to have things generally be left in that state, but not actually be reset, it would, would better be able to control them, we can tell it to stop. And our timelines 
Although they, we can drag them into the scene, we then need to relink things up to them. So the assets that we create here for the timelines don't remember the objects they're linked to. So if I select the asset for cutscene two and go to timeline, all it's telling me is, yep, there's animation tracks, there's a cinema machine track, it doesn't know any more than that. It's only when I select it in the context of the scene that it actually knows which objects it's linked to. So it's a really important thing there with timeline that the assets don't remember the things in the scene. And this can actually cause us problems. There's something I need to be careful of with the timelines when I'm animating them and uh, setting up things like of that is if I've got something where there's a fair bit of a hierarchy. So if I was, for example, uh, let's set up an animation. Uh, let's make it that the bridge actually has something on it. Let's make the bridge. Now let's give the bridge a plane uh, and we'll go to the scene view and we will shrink this a whole hell of a lot. Uh, and then let's position that three meters above it. Uh, so actually maybe higher, more like five. So I could set up an animation on this plane that is attached to the bridge. So what I mean by that is my intro cutscene here. I could, alongside my, uh, actually no, it's the bridge up here one. So I could also get here and be recording. Let's work out where it's in position there. Uh, so that works. And if we select our timeline again, so you'll notice, yep, that's working. So that looks all right. What I can do is I can update my recording here. So when you do record again, it can just be recording additional information. So I could actually animate that plane at the same point in time. So that plane, five and then you know as the bridge goes down maybe the plane doesn't go quite as far maybe the plane lags behind a bit uh, that will make it seem a bit more like it's bouncing and then on this side maybe it doesn't go as high so it looks like it's sort of being compressed and then we get back to this point and it's at five and then I stop recording so now it goes up and we get that bit of as if there's a bit of bounce there. Now that's cool, but if I then added another game object here and that plane moved under it, and then we select that timeline and watch what happens. So it goes up. The animation for the plane has been lost. So bring the plane back here and reselect the timeline. Then the animation for that plane is back. But if it was under that game object, it wouldn't work. So an important thing when we're recording animations in the timelines, or actually just animation clips in general, the hierarchy matters. If you change the hierarchy afterwards, uh, so if you change the position something is in the hierarchy in terms of what its parent is, sometimes even naming changes, it can actually cause the animations to not be able to apply. So that's something to really watch for if you are needing to mess with the hierarchies there, is that it can break animations. So general recap with Cinema Machine stuff and Timeline in particular. Actually, it's more a general recap of Timeline. Timeline is great anytime we're needing to do cutscenes or to have something where we want to generally have a lot of things keying off 
uh, time. So we're, we're having a sequence of events unfold. That's really where it shines. And it allows us to coordinate things like cameras, the positions of objects, control audio. We can run different things in code. All of these things we can carefully control and manage that sequence. And it allows us to test it all in the editor but without even playing. And it allows us to adjust timings and tweak the rate of change between things. Because we saw, you know, the, the character, if we go back to the timeline, the character moves up to the door currently. And so we'll play from here where they move up to the door. So move up to the door, move back. Um, let's just look at that again. So they move forward towards the door, stop, and they immediately move back. So we could change that behavior if we wanted to, because we can select our animation that's happening there. We can go to our curves view, and then we can see the individual positions that are actually changing. And we could modify these. So we could change the particular value, but we could also change the slope between these. Um, so we can change exactly the, you know, how quickly it's doing that movement. We could add in some extra keys. Uh, so at this point, you know, we could add it if we wanted to have, uh, you know, that first half a second, if we wanted it to be a little, you know, they haven't actually moved at all. So we can see that one, We've got a key of four and eight point, or about nine. We could edit this and make that still nine and adjust the actual timing of it. So it might be that, okay, for half a second, they've paused. So we then play, they move forward, get there and actually stop for a bit. So we can come through and tweak these afterwards. We can manually edit aspects of the curves uh, to get kind of the appearance that we want. So Timeline just makes it so much easier for being able to incorporate stuff like of that. So really, really strongly recommend experimenting with stuff like Cinemachine and Timeline in particular together uh, because they're incredibly powerful. They allow you to do a lot of things really rapidly without any code. You know, we could have been animating lights in here as well. That ability to animate essentially anything you can see in the inspector is incredibly powerful. And because we're switching between cameras, we could also have done a fade in here. So, you know, why not? We, let's chuck in a, a, fi a final thing of we have a fade in. So we know we're on security camera one to begin with. Uh, we could add in our storyboard, which we know we can do the fading with. Um, so that, I'm gonna start that up. 0.5 and then all we need to do in Cinemachine is again we've already got our cameras in we've already got animations actually happening on these uh, so security cameras don't have any animations on them but what we do is we know it's on security camera one so we drag that in we're recording at that point we can select the camera and our alpha is at one then over half a second, we are going to drop the alpha down to zero and then done. So now we have something where we fade in. We switch, we watch the, them sort of hesitate, go through. You know, that switch over here between the cameras, we could actually chuck in another super quick little sort of fade uh, to white here. So we could just really rapidly. So if we want to avoid that bit of a sort of a jump there, then we can have that. We can do the same thing with security camera two. Give that also the storyboard extension. And then back into our cutscene, we record. Uh, so once we're recording, then we just adjust the alpha again, sets at one, and again, just a little tiny bit later, I think we did like 0.1 of a second. So again, we do 0.1 of a second, and we're down to zero. Now, what we get is we fade in, 
really rapidly, but we could always tweak that if we wanted. We watch them stumble a little bit. We do a really rapid fade. And then we the bridge will appear. So signals when you're doing the in just in testing like of this, signals don't fire. Uh, but the um, everything else will typically fire. Uh, so then if we're playing, we fade in really rapidly, go through, see the super rapid uh, fade to white, switch over view, and then the bridge appears. So super powerful doing all these things with Center Machine because we could also be switching between post-processing effects. Uh, we can kick off a whole bunch of different things really, really easily with this stuff. Um, and that's one of the, the great things with it that makes it so incredibly powerful uh, is just being able to activate these different ones. And yeah, I highly recommend diving into to Cinemachine and Timeline. It'll, it's going to let you do a lot of really cool things really easily. Uh, and yeah, have an experiment with the project, play around with all the other different things that you can be doing with it. There's so many different areas of how you can be working with this. Um, so definitely make sure you check it out. Thanks folks, that is all for this video. If you're looking for the project, you'll be able to find it up on GitHub and I've put a link to that in the description below. If you've got any feedback, any questions, please chuck in a comment. And if you're looking to find ways to support the channel, Chucking in a like or subscribing to the channel is always a big help. If you're looking to go further than that, then I do have a Patreon set up and any support there is super appreciated. And there's a bunch of different things that you're, you'll get as part of being a, a patron there. And the big thing is it's going to help me make more cool things like this, which is going to help more people uh, like yourself to be making more games, which is awesome. And that is, that, is, that is all for now. Thank you.